Today we're doing a Neve WordPress theme setup tutorial and review here. So I'm gonna look at the free version. I'm gonna set up a basic website. So this is the actual page that we're gonna set up during the setup and tutorial section of the video. So um, that's what that's gonna look like. I'm gonna put it through the same performance testing that I put all the other themes through a couple of weeks ago. So same as how I tested Astra, Bloxy, Cadence, Generate Press. I'm gonna do the same thing for Neve here. And we're going to have a look at the free features that you get here. So what is the starter sites? How many starter sites are there? Um, what are the custom blocks like? And what is the customizer like in the free version of this theme? So if all this sounds interesting, then keep watching. Let's start off by talking about performance because Neve is a high performance theme. I did a video about the fastest WordPress theme two weeks ago, but I neglected to include Neve in the comparison. I did put Astra, Bloxy, Cadence, Generate Press and Ocean, but I forgot to put Neve in there. So I'm doing Neve today, same server, same test site. Um, let's go ahead and run the same benchmarks. So PageSpeed Insights, perfect 100, which is ideal. That obviously is just as fast as any of the other themes. And in GT metrics, it's getting a 92, which is excellent as well. So let's see how that compares. So Neve is the only one in Google PageSpeed to hit 100. They all got 99 or 98 basically. So basically no difference between them, but uh, yeah, just a slight victory there to Neve. And on GT metrics, Neve again is the equal winner here with Generate Press. So excellent performance from Neve again. And if we want to look at some more detailed analysis from GT Metrics, we can see the total size of Neve's 887 kilobyte page is basically the same as any of the other ones here. Generate Press, very slightly lighter and very slightly less CSS with Generate Press. So Generate Press may be slightly lighter than Neve, but the performance is still excellent from Neve, just as good as any of the others. And in terms of the actual server request number, again, 19 requests from Neve, uh, only Generate Press and Bloxley and Astra there are a little bit uh, lighter in terms of their server requests. So pretty much um, you can say Neve is on par with any other high performance theme. And you could probably make a case that it's the fastest possible WordPress theme um, alongside Generate Press, I'd say. If you're curious about the server I used for this test, I actually used a DigitalOcean uh, one gigabyte AMD premium server. So I think they're fairly cheap, around $7 a month. If you wanna try it, you can get 60 days for free. There's a link in the description you can try out. Um, exactly what I use today, basically. I'll put a link to a setup tutorial as well if you haven't tried DigitalOcean either. But if you follow the channel for a while, you might realize that I like to use Vulture High Frequency a lot as well. Um, this is very close in its performance. I had a bunch of uh, DigitalOcean referral credit I needed to use up, so I thought I'd run some tests with DigitalOcean. So excellent performance from DigitalOcean as well. Anyway, check out that link if you're interested. Let's get back to our tutorial. Okay, so let's just walk through the setup experience. We are on a new fresh install of WordPress here. We're under appearance and themes. We can find the Neve theme in the WordPress repository. It's completely free. It's normally actually pretty close to the top of the popular themes there, or you can just search for Neve in here, but let's just go ahead, install and activate Neve. Okay, so let's activate this one. Now I'm just gonna look at the free version today. I'm not gonna look at the pro version at all. I might have a look at some of the free versus pro options, but I'm really just gonna focus on this free version here. So congratulations, we've been installed and ready to use. Now it's gonna say, try one of our ready to use starter sites. So we can go ahead and click that one. And to get the starter site, you need to have the cloud templates and pattern collection plugin active. So you can install and activate it from that menu there. All right, so this is where we can see the starter site. So there's a bunch of them on here. A lot of them are premium, but a few of them are free. So if we actually select free there, we can see how many there are. So um, I think there's about 16 there by the look of it. And let's start with the blog. So the minimal blog looks pretty interesting. Let's uh, go ahead and import that one. And we can choose exactly what components we wanna import here. And it also adds some extra Gutenberg blocks here with this Otter plugin as well. So let's go ahead and try it out, import the entire site. Just wait for this one to install here. But well, that's all good. It probably only took 20 seconds to do that. Uh, we can subscribe here, but you can actually skip and add your own content. So let's see what that's like. So this is gonna give you a little introduction to the Otter Blocks where it says what it's got. So there's uh, a, yeah, a little bit of a sales pitch there, but nothing too important there. Basically we have some extra blocks. And apart from the extra blocks, this uh, works just exactly the same as the Gutenberg standard editor that you get with WordPress. So you can click any text and start editing it. Uh, the first thing I realized was what is this yellow thing? Let's have a look. I think it is a background image. So we open our sections up the top. I like to work with this because it makes it a bit clearer where things are. So if we actually have a look here, this is the section that we're on here. We can look at the style and background content. This is where we find the, the background and that actually is an image. 
So we can change it to another image or we can change it to a gradient or a solid color. Got some nice pre-made gradients on there, which is kind of cute. Uh, let's go with something like that, but you get the idea. And the page design itself looks pretty nice, I gotta say. Uh, if we have a look at it in the browser, let's have a look at that. So this is what we've got, it looks pretty contemporary. I like the, the design looks very professional so far. The news section, I think that is where the actual blog grid is here. So that's our Hello World post and we've got uh, these nice black and white um, featured images. So you can obviously replace this stuff with your own. Uh, if you wanted to use black and white, you'd have to stick with black and white images or you could just replace it all with, with color. I'm sure color will look fine as well. If we go back to our home page, let's have a look how responsive this is. So I'm going to have a look at this and just have a look at, uh, say, iPhone 12 Pro. That's what it looks like on the iPhone. So that's still pretty clean. And let's look at a tablet as well. So let's look at the iPad Air. Again, this is a really, uh, the responsiveness is good as well. So I like that. I respect that part of it. If you're trying to design your own uh, responsive blocks in Gutenberg, it can be a bit of a hassle and a bit of a, a bit of a time sink trying to get everything perfect in every sort of resolution. So it's nice that this is good in terms of it's how its responsiveness works. Uh, if we want to add extra blocks, let's have a look what is that process. So let's go ahead and check a section there. Let's go and add a block before that one. And let's go ahead and choose something here. So let's have a look at all the, all the options. So straight away, you see the Otter blocks, the plugin that it installed automatically there. We can have button groups. We've got uh, some forms, which is cool. They're actual um, contact forms and things. And we've got some social icons. So that's what those look like. So those are nice little things to add on. And the other thing we've got is this tab called patterns, which gives us a lot of uh, full sections that are pre-designed and they look like this. So let's go ahead and try one of those out. There's quite a lot of patterns on here and we can actually explore them with that explore button and they're all grouped into categories, which is nice there. So um, quite a lot actually. And all this is all this is in the free version too. So very solid in terms of how much free content we're getting here. So I, I, I appreciate that. And this is pretty nice. So let's go ahead and update that and see what that looks like in the browser too. So now we've got that new section that we just added on and let's have a look how well responsive this one is too. So that's pretty good. That's on the iPad, on the iPhone. Let's see if it actually goes to one column. So that looks, looks pretty nice. The other thing you can do is just um, in Google Chrome, you can just change it to responsive and you can actually just drag this and actually see how the um, content resizes as it moves. So this is, this is pretty solid. A lot of um, these free block plugins that you find around the place, um, the responsiveness can be a bit janky, so it's good to test it and make sure it looks good at different resolutions. So, so far, so good. I quite like how it's performing. And I assume this is all quite straightforward to edit. If we go ahead and click this, it's just a standard button. This is just a heading and a paragraph and an image. So all very straightforward to go ahead and change the content there. The next important thing to consider when using a theme is the customizer, because uh, this is where themes really differentiate each other in terms of what you get in the customizer. So the usual things you want to look at is the headers and the blog layout and the post layout. So let's have a look at those features. Oh, and also colors. It's good to have global colors. So this one does have global colors there. You can see the palette is straight there. And if you want to go ahead and change a color, so for example, text color, if we wanted it a dark blue, um, it does that and it does it globally through our site. Even the, even this, block that we added that wasn't part of our starter site has consistent styling on there too. So that is good to see. Sometimes you add blocks from plugins and you don't get the styling applied automatically. So that is nice. I uh, appreciate that feature. Anyway, let's go back to the default color, but you get the idea, very easy to apply color changes. Can you do the same with fonts? I, I assume so as well. So let's go ahead and have a look at the headings. Let's say we wanted to change the H2, so you've got that on there. Can we change the font? So there it's set to Poppins and we wanted, to, if, say if we wanted to change it to Comic Sans and be silly, yeah, it does it. Um, yeah, and it does it straight across the whole page. So that's pretty good. Obviously I don't want Comic Sans. I just wanted to see if that feature, how it works. So let's just roll back to what I had. I think let's discard the changes. Cool. 
So the header, um, the header looks like this. We've got our site name and some um, menu there. So pretty normal, but let's see what else we can do. We've got a header and ooh, we've got three sections for our header, which is nice. And can we change the layout of the header? Um, you can obviously put things wherever you want. So if we wanted the menu over there, you can move it across You can put things wherever you need them. You could move it onto the top. If you wanted to have the they're up there, so you can you can change that however you like. They might actually have um, presets there. So header presets as well. You've got these, and you can look at that in different devices as well. Um, so they've got a hamburger menu on the tablet and the mobile and text menu on desktop there. So a few different options there. All of them look solid. So I really like this. I think a lot of free themes don't get this part right. Um, you have to kind of design your own header and it's hard in a lot of free themes. So this is good. This is on par with something like Cadence and Astra and Bloxy or have good menu editors like that. So um, I quite like that. Well, that covers our header. What about the blog and the single page, the single post layout? So this is our blog. I might actually delete the Hello World post so it looks better. Hang on, let me just do that and I'll come back in a second. Okay, I deleted the Hello World so it looks a bit more clean and we can have a better idea about what this is going to look like. So uh, you'll get to this through the layout section here, I think. So we've got uh, the blog archive is where you'd find this. Okay, so there's three layouts you can choose from. There's a list and there's covers. This is pretty interesting here. So they've added a bit of darkness to them and put white text on there. So that's cool. And you can choose how many columns you want here on different devices as well. So one on mobile, two on tablet, and you can customize that. That's really nice. You can have it as a grid at the moment, and we could have it as masonry if you like that vibe. Didn't change to masonry for covers. What about on grid? No, that's interesting. I wonder how I get it to change to masonry. What if I change the columns to three, then maybe... Okay, that's a masonry effect. So it might be towards the, um, the length of the post here is where we get the masonry effect. So when we were on two, the actual blog expert wasn't long enough to cause that masonry effect to come into effect. So um, that might be why. I'm not actually a big fan of masonry anyway. I like, I like grid myself. So, but this is cool having three there. And there's an option called featured post there. So you can actually enable a featured post section. So you can actually put your newest post right at the top there. Um, that can be the latest post or it can be a sticky post. So maybe you've got a big um, important post. I don't actually have a sticky post so far, but um, you could sticky a post right to the top. Maybe it's an important thing to get uh, started when you're on your blog. What's the most important thing to learn? You could put that straight at the top. Um, so that's cool. Let's have a look at the ordering and content here. So they've got post pagination. By default, it's set to number, but we've got infinite scroll and number and search fields. So um, let's change to that and have a look. I'm not seeing anything down here. Maybe we need to change the number of posts displayed before we we'll get pagination to show up. So maybe let's try that. So if you don't know how to do that, that's probably in the um, settings here. We've got reading settings in our thing. So at most we can show 10 posts. I think we actually have uh, less posts than 10. So if we drop that down to say six, sorry, I should make that smaller. Let's make it uh, four. Okie dokie. So now we've got the pagination numbers showing up there. So that's pretty sweet. Should be a, what do they mean by search? Um, I don't see a search on there. Number and search field. Infinite scroll, let's try that. Um, okay. The infinite scroll now, surely. Yeah, I saved it. Okay, so I've been playing around with this for a while. I can only actually get the number one to work. So I don't know, maybe it needs a certain amount of length before infinite scroll will kick in, but it doesn't really explain why the search field one doesn't display it. Oh, there's the search field suddenly. Interesting. I wonder why that suddenly decided to appear. Oh, I can't see it on the page though. Well, that's a little weird that it's showing up in the customizer, but not on the page, but no, uh, whatever. I don't actually like the look of that search field anyway. So I, if I was actually using this, I'd probably just use number anyway. But um, let me know if you've found a way to get that to work properly because I couldn't get that to work properly in my testing. The next thing we should look at is the actual single post layout. So let's load up a single post here. So by default, this looks pretty nice, honestly. I think you've got the title there over the featured image there. That looks cool. That's the cover method and we've got normal method as well. So normal method, you've got title, date, image, see actually how much we can customize that. That might be in the meta if we want to hide the date. A lot of times we like to hide the date so their old posts don't look so out of date. 
But um, yeah, anyway, that's fairly straightforward. Page elements, you can turn things on and off as well. So if you didn't want, say, the, the, um, the what's that, the thumbnail? Yeah, the featured image is called thumbnail for some reason, but I think you should be able to work that out fairly easily. Um, why doesn't it come back? Let's reload and see if we get it back. Okay, that's okay. So I think that might be one of those weird Australian internet moments where things don't work the way you think they would. But I gotta say, I really like that cover method. I think that's cool. So that's good. And we can actually tweak the opacity on the overlay of the image. So that's interesting there. So you can have it dark if you like. Um, you can actually hide the featured image if you don't want the featured image. So you can still have the cover, um, but you can actually change that overlay color. So by default, it's that color. Let's go back to 50 again. And if we go there, we can have colors from our template, um, global colors, or we can choose any color or we can have a gradient. So let's have a gradient. So let's, that's got default gradient in here. Um, and that's what we've got. Or you could, you could tweak this. Yeah, you could just plug in any colors you want and apply transparency on there as well. So that is pretty cool. I appreciate that feature, but I probably preferred having the featured image to be honest. Oh, you can have the featured image with the gradient on top. How nice is that? So that I just discovered that by accident, which is nice, but I think let's stick with what we had before, but you get the idea. You can do a lot of things with that blog single post header. So pretty powerful, the amount of CSS you can edit just through this customizer. So the background of this box is customizable through here as well. Same, same options as well, but I think I'll leave it on dark background, but you get the idea. And you can even change the order of things around. By default, the post navigation is hidden, but say if we wanted to drag the post navigation, uh, how do we do that? There we go, drag it up. There we go, so you get the idea there. You've got a bit of control over how the template is ordered. And the other thing I want to look at was the actual sidebar here, because it didn't look like we had an option for sidebar, but I'm assuming they'll probably have it somewhere else. If we have a look at layout and content and sidebar. So here we can actually choose the layout of each um, type of page. So we've got options for the blog archive page. So you can have a, a um, full width, a left sidebar or a right sidebar. Here we are on a single, uh, single post. So right now we've got it on right, we can have full width, full width if we want as well. I quite prefer to have full width. You can have it on the left as well. And then you can change how much content width you want as well. So that's a nice little tweak. Um, I appreciate that as well. So you can do that on other pages as well. So they've given you a good amount of customizability there too. And the final thing I want to look at here is the footer. So this is the thing I hate. This is on the free version. We've got Neve powered by WordPress. There's actually no way to change this in the free version in the customizer. So if we click change copyright, it's going to take us through an affiliate link to the pro um, to the pro version here. So pro, um, if you wanted to upgrade now, yeah, at least seventy dollars, probably one fifty if you wanted to use it on a an e-commerce shop. So um, yeah, if you want to get rid of that through the customizer, um, you got to pay the premium. But anyway, you've got three, it's basically the same as a header. You've got three columns with three sections. You can make a fairly complex footer with all the widget areas there. You can put all the content you want in your footer. Um, but on the free version, you've got to put up with this, but I can actually get rid of this with some CSS, which I'll show you how to do right now. If we head back to the main menu, where are we? Additional CSS. And I am going to put in a bit of CSS there. And we can see we've got <laughs> idea spot here now. So I'll share this. Um, CSS on my blog. I'll put the link in the description so you can just paste that in and change that text to whatever you want. The downside is with this CSS, it's just a rough workaround. It breaks the rest of the footer, so you can't really have any other footer besides this little one here. But I think that's better than having that advertising in your footer. So um, let me know if you found a better solution than what I've done there because I think it would be nice to improve uh, the footer in the free version. I think. Um, from reading the comments on the WordPress um, forums, a lot of people were really annoyed because they actually used to include the footer, um, the full footer in the free version, and then suddenly they took it away and put the ad in um, for Neve there. But um, that really annoyed a lot of people. It would annoy me too if I had a lot of live websites using this theme, and then suddenly that popped up one day. 
So anyway, this is just my quick little workaround. Um, some people have asked me, is it okay to go and remove things like this from themes? If it's free, do you have to leave that in there? No, you don't. Everything on the WordPress repository is open source and general public license. That means it's free to edit, change, do whatever you want with. That is how the WordPress open source repository works. So totally fine to go ahead and do stuff like this. Um, also, um, I'd love to be able to do this with a PHP snippet. I just haven't had the time to figure it out. So let me know if you've got a better solution than what I've done here. But um, for those of you wondering how to just quickly work around that Neve ad that they've got in the bottom there, um, that's something you can do reasonably easily. Okay, so I think I've used enough of this theme to reach some conclusion. Outstanding technical performance. So it's among the fastest, lightest weight themes out there. This Generate Press, Cadence and Bloxy are pretty close, um, but Neve is very, very fast. I think the free content was nice. It included blog and WooCommerce data sites in the free version. I didn't actually show you the WooCommerce. I'll show you that quickly. So there's one called My Shop and pretty normal WooCommerce site here. We've got um, products. Um, yeah, very normal WooCommerce site there. Uh, pretty easy to use, I guess. And the other one was a pet store. Basically the same same thing, but just different, different fonts, I think. Um, but yeah, it's fine. It's good. A lot of themes don't give you the WooCommerce. They make you upgrade to the Pro before you can get um, the WooCommerce set up. So that's cool that they give you that for free. If you're just looking for free content, I think Astra still wins that one though. That has tons of free content. And the customizer, as we saw, that was very solid in terms of what you could do with the header and the blog layout and the posts. So that was pretty good. Even for a free version, I think that was well above average. Um, there were a few little issues that I ran into, but yeah, on the whole, I quite liked it annoying footer that really put me off i think if it wasn't for that issue i could really recommend neve but because of that footer thing that really put me off um i think it's it's still a great free theme i would still prefer using um cadence and bloxy i think for the customizer or just free content i still like astra in terms of my free theme so neve probably sits just outside the top three themes in terms of its total conclusion. So um, that's just my opinion, of course. Let me know in the comments what you think, if I've missed anything or uh, any other things about Neve that you might want to share. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.